Today was a day I've been waiting for all series. This little island off Onslow showed me some of the best fishing of my life 12 months ago, and I was keen to share it with Ian and the crew. If things went as I remembered, we were in for some awesome fishing in the shallow waters surrounding the cave. Now we're actually based in Onslow at the moment and we've come a few miles out to sea to a group of islands known as the Mackerel Islands and they've all got different names, different characters but this one especially has got a good reef system around it plenty of oysters and plenty of fish at the moment so we're going to keep on plugging away still in West Australia so you're not too far away from home and you've got all this right on the doorstep you couldn't pick a better spot to learn or refine the art of saltwater fly fishing, as the island usually has at least one calm side where you can relax and work the area. Small blue and white baitfish flies and metal spinning lures are easily the most successful ways to get into the local queenfish population, and Marshy didn't have to wait long to get his first hook up. Queenfish aren't only tough fighters, they're also one of the most spectacular aerial fish and take to the air when hooked. Ian had to earn his fish the hard way as it kept its head down, but I was soon hooked into another queenie from the school which had other ideas. Okay. Now. No hesitation in swimming off there. stage left and just nailed it. Another visitor from stage left was this sea snake, which got me wondering whether I could talk Marshy into a swim. Not much chance of that, there were more fish to be had. Now this spot is just absolutely full of fish, fantastic. And it's just this great anticipation of what you might catch. So, And with fly fishing you can literally feel every heartbeat of that fish on the end of this line. And it's really just a case of a tug of war. <laughs> that was close. That was very close. Straight out in the lift out. Yep. Yeah. Oh, bigger fish. Oh. Oh. Hands on. Oh. 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 Now what I did there, the fish were just chasing the lures that I was retrieving. So I put it under the boat and jigged it once, and that is what they want to see. What a great queenie. Now the big ones are okay to handle. Not a problem. They don't have any spiky bits, so don't worry. He's ready to go. And there he goes. He'll be fine. Wow, a hot start to the day. 
but you'll see soon that something weird was following Marshy around as usual. Here he comes. Now, here we go again for weirdness. That's a squid and they tend to attack flies a little bit. If we bring him right up. Here he goes, yum yum, he likes that, thank you. And squid on fly, they're very hard to hook, so I'm gonna let Steve throw the squid you get him straight away. Got him. There we go. He's throwing his ink out now. Doesn't like that, that's a nice squid. These creatures are cephalopods and use their ink as a means of defense like a smoke screen from a James Bond film. They're very aggressive and we'll see these little Yozuri jigs the moment they hit the water with their keen eyesight. Keep the jig still and the squid will jump on. Once you hook them, you only need to use gentle pressure to work them back to the boat. Now we netted that one, but you can actually grab them by the back of the neck, by the eyes, and uh, never put them in a bucket of water. Because if you do that on the boat, well, it's just going to throw everything at you. A squid uses jet propulsion to move by forcing water out of their body as you can see here. You wonder whether the inventor of the jet engine came up with the idea by watching squid. He's empty. Yep. Yeah. So he's grabbing behind the eyes there, Bruce. Now this is a calamari squid, you can tell that by the flaps on him. And there's two types of squid in Australia. There's the arrow squid, which is very pointed on the flap, and this one. This is a popular one for the squid rings. And there's not a lot in him. Now, his ink sac is, is about smaller than my little finger, nail. But it's so concentrated that the actual Spanish make black rice with it and get that fishy taste, so I love them. They're great, and I don't think they're weird and they've got no teeth, so I don't mind them, just suckers. Now, what I'm gonna do, this is the camera that we use to swim out the back of the boat to see the fish. And we're gonna have a bit of a laugh here. I've got this camera, bit of mono. I've got a fly that I've cut the hook off so we don't literally skull drag things. And we're just gonna show you if it actually attacks that. And I'm sure it will. So we've got camera, we've got fly with no hook. Okay, that's where it looks at you. That's what it's gonna look at. Bit of line, let's have a bit of fun. <laughs> this is going to be magic. <laughs> this be the air makes you do mad things. You can see that the fly immediately attracts the attention of the queenfish. The problem was, it was attracting the attention of some other toothy critters that might just cut the cable, so to speak. Bruce, what was that? I don't know, but it was big and black. <laughs> Mate, I reckon we should pull that in and just check it because I think a whole lot's going to disappear in a minute. Well, I think it might do. Mate, we just do things for the sake of it, I think. Let's get him in. Now, we'll check this. What the guys didn't realise was that after the mackerel couldn't swallow the camera, it swallowed the fly I threw out the back instead. Mate, I reckon that's a mac. It's a little one, but uh, it's got a bit more speed than the others. I'll grab it for you, mate. Oh no, it's... Oh, what is it? Yes it is. Yes it is. Yeah. Little school mackerel. Okay, bring him in. These are great fun on the fire rod. Oh, tail him for that.
look how sleek they are when they come at you. Now, we'll hold him across here because he's got nothing that's going to hurt us. You grab my rod and I'll be hooking. There you go. When these spotted mackerel want to eat something, they'll keep on going until they do. My first mac on the fly rod in very strange circumstances. Now, have a look at those dentures. He's only a baby. But, uh, it'll still take a finger off, I reckon, mate. Scissor teeth. Yep. I think we'll put him back, though, Steve. I think we'll put him back, mate. Now, sometimes mackerel, after a fight, aren't going to revive well. So what we're going to do is just swim him here and see how he goes. See, he's floating like that because they tend to exhaust themselves very, very badly. But there you go. Bye. <laughs> he was fine. <laughs> Now when I'm stripping, over the finger, little tiny, tiny pulls. So it really makes the fly work. It seems that for the whole day, at least one of us was connected to some kind of fish, and you just never know what might show up and eat your lure. The outgoing tide attracts fish from everywhere that feed on small bait fish and even each other. Now, I think it's time for a set of new flies. This one is not very well. I can take all that off and probably, if I really wanted to, would reuse all that, but nah. We'll put it away so nobody gets it in their feet. That's it, 17 queenfish does that. That is the most beautiful fish I think I've ever seen. That's a diamond trevally. It's only a little one. These flutes disappear as they get older and they don't look quite so box shaped. But this is a tiny little one, probably only a year old. And the fact that I've crushed my barbs means I can put him back and he's not gonna feel a thing. Look at that, fantastic. The shadows were growing long, but there was time for one more cast each. Just like the rest of the day, this meant one more fish each, and both seemed to be full of surprises. A gold spot trevally. You can see here that they usually travel in groups even when hooked. And if you put a lure down there, you'd probably hook the other one too. Mick Jaggerfish. So out of the camera. Here we go. Well, this little island certainly lived up to expectations and gave us more memories to last another 12 months. If you bring your own boat, you can stay at the Onslow Sun Chalets in town for only about $25 a day and launch from the local marina but groups can also stay on Thevenar to really get away from it all. After getting outgunned by that yellowfin back in the city, we thought we'd travel north to go game fishing with the experts from Exmouth Game Fishing Charters and show you all how a game boat is set up and used once a fish is hooked. Our skipper was Pete Meyer, who knows these waters like the back of his hand, and the crew all had more fish under their belts than most see in a lifetime. The boys have obviously got the preparation down pat, they know exactly what's going on. There's no panic at the moment at this stage, and they're probably 
won't be when we hook up. These guys know exactly what they're doing. Exmouth game fishing charters, they'll accommodate in every way and they really know what's happening. They're going to try and get you on the button. You're the fisherman, they'll get you on the case. Let's hope that we get some good fish. To attract the fish, they use baits and teasers in a spread on the water. But before you do anything, you need to learn how to use the chair. So you've got me in the chair, Dave. Where do we go from here? You put one, right, one hand under here, one hand on there, because of course you've got the leverage action, you give me a lot of weight on this, okay? And then get into your gimbal. If the line starts going slack or you feel the weight coming off it, just start winding as fast as you can. Well, nothing left to do now but get comfy and wait for the fish to come along. Just when you're off in La La Land, you can be sure a fish will strike the lure. The crew all have their own jobs to do, which allows the angler to concentrate solely upon landing that fish. Okay, now your idea, ready? That, yeah. that, that, push that lever up further up the strike. Up to the strike, that's it. Now start moving the fish. Use the legs, that's it. Use the legs. That's the go, that's the go. Okay, yeah, it's fine. Okay. The chair and reel are hooked together and you use your legs rather than your arms and back to fight the fish. This is essential when fishing for larger fish like marlin, where a fight can last over four hours at times, but this fish wasn't quite that big. There it was, colour. It was a safe bet that it was Ian's first ever of some kind of tuna, but which one? As it came closer, the yellow glow gave it away and the boys brought his first yellowfin tuna on board. It had grabbed a pusher or skirted lure, which are easily removed for a quick release to avoid harm to the fish. Well, he's already made me look bad, but we hope the tuna weren't done for the day. Even though these are at least 10 kilos, you can expect them to grow five times that size in only a few years. Exmouth is right on the doorstep of the Ningaloo Reef, and the wildlife is spectacular. It certainly adds that special touch to your day in the water. Yeah, the weather's getting good now. It is. This is the weather we're after. It's only going to get better as this afternoon goes on. Yep. Yeah. Right, mate, you're right, you're right, just come up yeah. on the drag attack. Okay. Up on the drag, that's it. Alright, away you go. I think it's a wahoo, mate. Yeah, I've got the look. Alright, drop them on. You can move your chair forward, mate. You're right, we'll get it. Take it right. Yeah. Here's them breaking the lackey, Dave. Yeah. G4, just want to grab the, got the sticks and just wind a couple of them in. Yeah. Right, come on. Yeah. That's it, you've got to keep the weight on them. Yeah. Up and down like I showed you yesterday. He was starting to get the hang of this now. The chair and quality tackle these charters use allows even someone like Ian, who's never been near a game fish, to settle in like a pro. Oh, Once the strong leader comes to the boat, the crew grab it and pull your fish on board. This leader can be up to 300 pounds, while your main line's only 20. This is why they call it sport fishing. The main line is light, and the leader is only there to assist in landing the fish, but there are regulations to make sure that you only use a small amount or your catch isn't verified. Mind you, that's only if you're claiming a record, and I don't think this tuna was going to get his name in the books. Still, it was great fun for someone who's never done anything like this before. There you go. That's how the pros do it in Exmouth. I think I should take some notes. <laughs>